Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real Fans Real Talk.com. Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh-huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real Fans Real Talk.com got it. Uh-huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh-huh. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the yeah, Go yeah. check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter. Tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son. You know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out, but real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. We had a good week coming up. A lot of things going on in the sports world. We got the 2K tournament coming up real soon. Um, but before we jump into all that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Mark the Statman Skevich. What's going on? Great to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, a lot going on in the world of sports. We got a couple of special guests uh, back on the program. We got Emerald Marie uh, joining us once again. Back again. It's <laughs> been a minute. Thanks for That's having right. Me. Welcome back. Welcome back. And of course, I needed some things, so I had to call the plug. <laughs> so I said, uh, Santos, what's going on? Can we get you to come down? And uh, he came. He definitely came down off the off the hustle in uh, uh, Brooklyn. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, man. Well, now, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, first of all, let me give you guys the, the backstory. We uh, we met Santos uh, at the turkey giveaway over in uh, Breeport a couple of weeks ago, and you guys saw last week Ladybug uh, chopped it up with him. But uh, he got so much going on that we didn't, we didn't think that was enough time, so we needed to let the world know a little bit more about what you got going on right now. Nah, thanks. Yo, that was a good. That was a good place to meet, man. The idea, the charity, and the give back is is always important. The essence of giving back is important. So it was good to meet there, and that was a good foundation. Definitely. But uh, everybody knows I'm on that show right now, Hustling Brooklyn, Tuesday nights, every Tuesday at 10 p.m. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, we showing the world, uh, showcasing talent and uh, the art, the, the skill of entrepreneurship, you know, and black excellence in the community. I think that's very, very amazing. And uh, shout out BET for giving us the platform. It's a good yeah. thing. And it's definitely, I know y'all been watching, I've been watching, I, I got caught up, uh, you know, last night on the DVR. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you've you been in some trouble on the, on the show. You've been in a mix of Yo, man, a listen, lot of listen. things. Let's <laughs> <Just happy>. go <laughs> down. Yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to bring all that up, but you definitely be in the mix of love. It's always, I feel like there's always a situation, and you always come out as the clean one in the situation, but you caused some trouble uh, on the show. Yo, you know what? <laughs> the cast, the cast members, they call me the sniper. I could, I could see that. I fall back, you know. You know what it is, though? I don't intentionally be doing stuff like that. Like, if, I don't, if anybody's seen the episode, I'm not going to give it away for the people that didn't see the last episode. I was just trying to help Shorty out. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that. Like, I was trying to situate the situation. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so now, I ain't trying to situate yeah, the situation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, we just going to skip past the whole forehead situation <laughs> then. And get I, situated. I guess. Yeah, it was situated. Okay. No, it got situated then. All, all right. right. Yeah, because I didn't know. You know, sometimes with the with the forehead, you know, that can be mistaken as, as other things. You know, somebody was yeah. in their feelings a little bit behind that. But I understand where you coming from if we got situated with the situation no, that's all, all, then it's yeah, all good yeah, yeah yeah that's my little sister you know i was just showing love and i was trying to put her on so like you know a little it wasn't that like that you know yeah and i can understand how you know homie would could have got it what you think about that <laughs> you know handle the situation <laughs> yeah it was a situation i you know? mean i don't want to give it away for people who didn't watch it but i think overall the whole show i love it um i was actually at the premiere i didn't meet you then um in brooklyn yeah, yeah. the private uh, screening and I mean, I think the whole idea of just showing this generation's hustle mm-hmm. and seeing how they balance, because a lot of people are influencers, but still work and they yeah. have nine to fives, but they are building empires on the side. So I love the whole concept of the show. Yeah, so which is cool. It's just cool. You know, mm-hmm. I think social media has changed the idea of everybody just putting their best foot forward. Yeah. They highlight real and not showing the behind the scenes. And BT has given us the uh, that idea of showing that, you know, yeah. and uh, it's, it's dope, man. Hustle in Brooklyn is definitely yeah. something to watch and tune into. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people can relate because a lot of people are trying to 
get a dream going and have the you know regular jobs at the same time yeah. right so. right right it's a process yeah. you yeah. know we forget the process we forget the idea of grinding and having multiple hustles it's okay like yeah. myself you and know? trip young everyone thinks we're just these huge superstars <laughs> 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 but that doesn't necessarily pay the bills so and i think it's more it's it's dope to be more multifaceted like you know i sell real estate during the day skincare line modeling all these wearing several hats and it's like yeah. some people glamorize it too much where they they kind of clown you for oh you still work here you still do this i thought you was on red carpet right. and it's like yeah. no like you're a hustler you're a hustler 24 7 no matter what you do so. exactly exactly i applaud you guys yeah no, there's Thank one you. thing you said you had mentioned before about people not um sticking with it as it is a process to when any in anything in life it's a process mm -hmm. um but you guys stuck with it how how did the whole bt uh show come about you know, well, honestly, I've always been a guy behind the scenes. I've been behind the scenes since I was like 16. I got I started off at Def Jam, me and my boy Darnell, who's on the show as well. Mm -hmm. We started, we was, we was like giving out flyers. Yeah. Like we was outside of clubs on promoting. The team. Yeah, before social media was a thing. Like wow. this was the thing. You go to the clubs, you give out flyers and whatnot. And then from there, uh, a gentleman by the name of Tashawn Gale, who's my mentor, he put me on. And I started working with Neo. Because, uh, you know, this one, Jay and Hov and them dudes came yeah. in with the Carter administration. And I think Neo and Rihanna, Tia Marie was priority. I started doing that for a couple years, and uh, I wanted to fall back and start my own branding company because I met so many people while I was in a row, and I was yeah. like, there's a misconnection between these huge brands that want to get involved with the culture, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? They, they want to they wanna talk like us, dress like us. The world wants to be like us. And I was like, let me bring the plug between those two. And mm -hmm. So I started my company. I was chilling, you know, I was doing great, and I got a call from L.A. You know, somebody from L.A. hit me up. I was like, you want to be on this show? Immediately, to be honest with you, I was just like... Because nah. oh, wow. reality TV has this idea, it has yeah. this misconception yeah. of yeah. just yep. issues and problems, and I didn't never wanted to be there. Like you said earlier, you yeah. know, they told me the realest thing, man. It was just like, no one like puts a gun to your head and says, this is the way you got to act. Yep. Yeah. You know? The real you, like, now you got to understand, money amplifies who you really are, mm -hmm. you know? If you are, if you a scumbag, if you you doing bad business, that's, yeah, that's money going to make you, money going to yeah. make, ampl amplify that, you know? Yeah. For me, it was just like, I'm not with that. Mm -hmm. I like to keep it clean. And um, I'm happy with my edits. <laughs> no, I, yeah, of course, because you always come off looking good in all the situations. You know what I mean? All right, we, now we spoke <laughs> about this uh, last <laughs> week. Are you in the editing room? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, you got to plug with the editing room. Yeah, you got like, to plug. Take this out, yeah. Like, take that shit out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm just happy, man. Exactly. You walk in there with a lot of 20s or 100s like, and just hold it around. Edit right this. this. Don't show scene, the no. kissing part. Yeah, take take that one out. Yeah. Now, did you, because we, all right, we spoke about this last week, the comedy show yeah, yeah all right now uh on the show uh don't know he, he said it was it was trash now i know they cut a lot of things out well, you asking a good question but no, <laughs> said, no, he asking a good good but question when they, you know but what, what what we saw it did look kind of kind of whack so did, did you think the show was was bad was that or that bad i, I say this um she is an amazing uh person meaning that she was able to attract a lot of people to come to that yeah. show. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a talent within itself. Yeah, to get people to come out and yeah, support like, you. Yeah, to get people just to come out. That many. Yeah, exactly. It was over, I think it was two over 200 people that was in there watching yeah. the show. So that was like, oh, I got to give Shorty props for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, there are different levels of co of comedy, and I think that this is a this is she's still in the beginning process of it, mm. and um. Uh, I spoke to her about it, and I spoke to her on a scene that wasn't shown on on uh, air, but she's working on her setup, you know, because yeah. comedy is a serious deal, you know? It's not, you just don't stand up and just tell jokes, yeah, you know? And, and there's a big difference between um, influencers online who are really funny. Like, you know, you're, you're just hilarious, be Simone, right? Yeah. When you are cutting videos and you can kind of, let me just do that again and let me cut this and make this yeah, funny, then. that's very different from stand-up. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So practicing stand-up, that's like a whole different world. Yeah, I mean, stand-up is the hardest form of comedy yeah, you're, you know, in front no of a live no cut crowd. There, so. yeah. And you don't know whether what type of crowd you're going to yes. get. Exactly. You don't know if Absolutely. you're going to have people who, are, who just literally laugh at just about anything yeah. Yeah. or the people who are just like, that ain't funny, man. Yeah. The hell is this guy? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then when, when you bomb on on one, it's like your your nerves will be like whatever. Exactly. And then yeah. To try to bounce back from that is yeah. you know. That's the difference of filming a live show versus a movie that you can edit and cut it. I mean, it's like you live, yeah. you mess you up. Go. That's you gotta it. go. It's, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. comedy is a, it's a science. And you, if you ever go, go to a comedy show, you notice that it's a storyline sometimes. And the mm -hmm. funniest moments sometimes relate to what we go through on a day to day yeah. basis. Right. So, I mean, she, I have full confidence she's going to get there. You yeah. know, this is something new for her. I think that was her first show. So, uh, I, I would love to see her progress and her get yeah, to that Yeah, I did like the fact that she wasn't, like, about quitting it at all. Like, she was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing this. And people, you know, doubt her all the time, but she's going to still continue to do it. I mean, yeah. I think if she keeps at it, eventually she'll she'll get it. Um, are now, are you guys going to still be, like, the management team? Well, like, I was never, it was my boy D. My boy D was uh, working um, with, with her. But, um, yeah, I'm in a good space. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Asia though is dope. She's a, she's dope, man. Yeah. Asia is dope. She's real, real talented. She's one of those people that who, she has the it factor, man. Yeah, like she's really, really dope. From just working in the business, there's some people that just got it. I seen her at the um, premiere, and that's what I. That's exactly what I said. Like you can look at her, and she has star quality and star power. Some yeah. people don't have that presence yeah. when they walk in, but she has it for like sure. Like you, you got that star power. Oh, thanks. Don't catch <laughs> you know me. Don't catch me. How is it uh, working? With an artist and uh, the parent is like so closely involved yeah. in the situation, because I know like sometimes when people have outside people in their careers to that extent, especially with his family, it could get a little tricky. But you guys kind of handled it well, and then music came out good, so the dad was cool. But I know it had to be a little bit. No, it was, but you know what? And this particular situation was special because he understood music. Yeah, you know, it's like he knew he knows sound. Okay, so we already. Was talking on that language you know music is a conversation so it was easy to have a conversation with him because he knows you know between him darnell and i he knows what the sound is supposed to sound like mm -hmm. you know so it's not like you know you're just going in there so it was it was easy but there are some times where you deal with management that has two different directions mm -hmm. and it gets a little bit confusing but uh not with this situation it was smooth we we, we delivered and we still delivering you know she's she's dope she has that she has that egg factor yeah. so it wasn't it wasn't an issue I have one more question for you. So going from being behind the scenes, doing marketing, promotion for Def Jam, and then you started your group, was 82 group? It was since 93. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. The 82 and was, I, I did something before that. Okay, before so how has that been playing behind the scenes to now you are in front of the camera and now people are seeing you more as the star of the show rather than behind the scenes because you've been hustling for years. So how is that like transition with just the public seeing you? Oh man, it was, it's weird to be right? honest. With, to be honest with you, it's really, really weird. Um, it's not a bad weird thing, but it's 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 different. I mean, you guys are in front of the camera, you know. I'm pretty sure people are now starting to notice, and um, but it's just a little bit different, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit different. I'm appreciating the process of growth. Yeah. Like I, like for me, I love the process. Yeah. I, you know, I love it when you when some, when, yeah when when you don't make it when when something doesn't happen. A lot of people get discouraged, you know. Like we were saying earlier about how people we have like four or five different jobs, and then this we got this is what we really want to do. It's okay. Yeah. Like so like. I love the process of going through things, of being on television. Cool. It's allowing me to expand my business. It's allowing me to network more. I feel like, not to get on a serious, serious note, but I feel like we're only on earth for this amount of time. Yeah. And you're supposed to, like, be as influential and, as, you know, be involved as much as you possibly can. Yeah. And uh, if I'm going to always be the guy in secret, in the, you know, mm -hmm. without being the best person I can be, what, what am I doing? Like, yeah. what am I doing? So, cool. Now that I'm on, I'm on the front street or whatever mm -hmm. let me Trying just to make the biggest yeah, impact exactly let me help as many people like i tell people all the time hit me up hit me up on instagram toast money dm me I'm most nine times out of ten i'm gonna dm you back and i'm yeah. gonna try to help you out however yeah. i can and that's 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 essentially it. so it's, it's it's cool i'm loving it that's awesome yeah my dms is lit so right if you want to hit him up for money he <laughs> says nine times out of ten. <laughs> so what you saying is you yeah. send your cash out to him what <laughs> we lit we lit what y'all need whatever you need i can get it in my dms right now <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah, that's man. That's, that's, that's good to know. Now, um, on on the show, you you just you spoke about um, not having a relationship with your father, mm -hmm. and then you, you you guys were trying to connect now. But I know that you are doing a lot of uh, charity stuff. Yeah. So, is mentoring something that you're looking to get into, or are you mentoring to, like? you know, the younger generations now or? Yeah, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. Um, what I, and yeah, I didn't have a relationship with my pops early on in my life, mm -hmm. but I had amazing people, mentors, mm -hmm. okay. that were like a father figures to me, you know? And I think that's what actually kept me grounded. I had uh, 
one of my uh, martial arts instructors, his name is Soke Hassan Khalid. I want to definitely give him some love and shout out. I had uh, my, uh, the deans, because in my school, y you got in trouble, they didn't, you know, they would actually set you down and put you on to what you really need to be doing. So, uh, Mr. Joe Peace, Mr. G, those guys. Crazy how you remember as a kid the people that actually played a part and actually try to help you, you know? It's yeah. crazy. I mean, you think about that, I'm pretty sure we can all sit here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. think about someone that that actually did, you know, helped you out yeah. because that's essentially what it is. So, I, I, yeah, it's, I, think that's, that's, I think that's what's important, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We spend too much time not giving back and not trying to put the next generation on. Mm -hmm. I think if we sit back and we actually invest more of that time, then we can lay a better foundation for people to come. Yeah. 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 So. Deep. <laughs> I'm like clapping. <laughs> That's good that you're <laughs> still hungry and humble because I see a lot of people, especially with reality TV, who get that light bulb quick, that spotlight, and they change up. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about it like, you know, I mean, I'm not sure if I should say it like this, but the world is not always in a nice place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The world, yeah. it, the world is miserable. We look at the news. We got so many things going on Negative in the world. So yeah. sometimes when we sit back and we look at reality TV, you want to be able to just to like point and say, oh, those people are going through misery because it's easy yeah. to kind of like say those people are going through something. Yeah. But when I did it, when I signed up, signed up for it, I was like, nah, we're not going to show that. We're not going to show that. It's going to be issues and problems, but we want to show you the process of fixing the issues too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's just not necessarily about throwing champagne at somebody or whatever the case because yeah. all that yeah that's gonna that's that's gonna do good but we want to show the process of like the, the hustle, that's the hustle I, and fixing the problem yeah, you know absolutely. that's why i did like with, with you know going back to the boy yeah. you know where you was trying to tell her like you know we in public this ain't really the place for that you know better than right that, you know yeah and, but usually it's now nah, we turn up champagne yeah. throwing a drink we fight you know get the baby throw it out yeah, and we don't have to <laughs> represent ourselves like that on national television for the I world to look at americans and this is the idea that they have of us is yeah. reality tv but if you can you know come with something positive you know so and it's challenging too bro it's not it's not easy yeah mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's not the easiest thing so yeah. like the network everybody has to believe in the idea mm -hmm. of cool we want to show issues because that's that's natural. Yeah, we all have them. But let's emphasize also on the solution mm -hmm. and the positive. Act. It's not easy, man. Trust me. It's not as easy as people make it seem. Because is that what made you gravitate more to doing the show? Because the yeah, it was yeah. about more showing the... Because we talk about the issue all the time. We talk about problems all the time. But what are yeah. we doing to actually fix it? Yeah. I'm going to be the guy behind the scenes talking about what I don't like on, t on reality TV, but not put my not sign up to be a part of the solution. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, you have that, an opportunity to yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. You can show a different side of reality tv especially which is being, what we need sorry, Go ahead. sorry especially being black and young we have and there's not a lot of representation that's good yeah right. for us reality tv you have to if you're going to be a part of it be you know in control of the narrative so that's great that you had to like i'm gonna do it but you're not about to just show me being yeah. ignorant you need to show me being successful figuring it out and then you know being ignorant sometimes <laughs> yeah i mean yeah it's gonna so, be issues yeah, with the ratings up, so. <laughs> right. and, 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 there's, and then there's certain people that are not there yet you know what i'm right. saying because yeah. they have not evolved into that part of their of li their lives mm -hmm. so they're gonna you're gonna they're gonna be a certain kind of way which is okay that's mm -hmm. all about trusting the process but i know for me i'm I'm a, I'm already at a point where I understand things a little bit differently. Yeah. So I'm always try to give my boy D some advice on family. Yeah. I'm always try to give an artist advice on how to deal with something. You know, I'm always try to fall back from a situation. Yeah. And uh, that's that's life, man. That's just the beauty of life. You know, and I don't want to sound like I'm preaching right now. No, nah, listen. No, I'm gonna start telling you what's they need <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your hands. Nah, they need they need you know? these uh, jewels yeah. at home. You know, the viewers need these jewels. Yeah. Did you have a, a a relationship with anyone else on the show prior to the show, or you and uh, yeah, me and Darnell, me and my boy D, we've been friends pff, over 15 years plus. No, but outside of the show, yeah. No, no, not not. I'm saying any other cast, cast members, members, or you just met everybody. Ivy, Ivy, me and Ivy had a good well, relationship. Oh yeah, you guys are. That explains the kiss on the yeah. forehead. That's really like my sister. Yeah. Like that's really my. Like I was really bugged out because you know what? I came from a place of like love and endearment. You know what I'm saying? But you know how man pride is. Yo, that was crazy. Like, the, the, you have to think the, the symbolism <laughs> of the of the forehead kiss. What that means? Yeah, it's a you little. know what I'm saying? So as a man seeing another man come up, and then you did kind of do the little. You know what? I, I, and, the, and you was kind of like. <laughs> it was a little. You got the little kiss and then you stuck that in there. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go on my Instagram and I'm going to put a poll. I want to know if people really feel like that's really a big thing. Like, I want I want to hear the options. Like, 
is kissing a woman on the forehead. If she, if, if y'all both single, it's fine. But if she the that homie woman is in a <laughs> relationship, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, do you want somebody to come put their on right your girl and then kiss her on the forehead? You it wasn't it. like that. <laughs> <laughs> That was two different. That was two. Di- Yo, that was another thing. Was two thing. <laughs> I, I was handling the situation. Yeah, situation. The situation. <laughs> yeah, it was me. Okay. Because when I, I first, understand. when I first, well, I, that was the kiss on the forehead. Like, wait, I said, what's yeah. up? Hey, how you doing? You know, she's short. She like five two, and I'm like, I'm six three or some shit. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna. What you want me to bend all the way down? And <laughs> dab kiss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was like, alright, cool. And then at the end. When she got into the situation, I was like, yo, you already know. You ain't supposed yeah. to be da-da-da-da. But the way that they chopped it was, like, together. Oh, yeah. So oh, I think that's the one thing yeah. is, that, yeah, with the, with the editing yeah. that we still do got to take it to but account. But it's all good. I, I still look good. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, it makes, it, it it makes, it makes so. for, for, you know? for good TV, man. You, <laughs> you like know? that, right? I can't. She going to say that all night. I am still not. We said our next show, like, it oh, was a situation that yeah. got situated, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> You like that, man. You better okay. patent that now before she go Rise crazy and run with it. Yeah, she gonna run with it. It's gonna be on shirts like next week. Yeah, I'm talking about man in the show right here because he, yeah. he like, what the, what are you talking about right now? He over here looking like, you gonna get him? Man, what I didn't know they were me? coming until the last minute, otherwise I would have watched the show in the He's like, but, man, you know. listen. Oh, man. He's but, like, let's get to the sports. Sports, <laughs> damn it. I mean, we let's could, talk about but. the game. <laughs> before, before we do, though, I mean, I it can't. is BET. That's a big deal. Like, how did it feel when you first found out? You know, originally you didn't want to do the show, but then when you actually see the production produced, and yeah. I, mean, I don't know, a watch party with friends, yeah. and you're actually on BDT. Shout BDT, out to 4040. We did the watch party at 4040. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to the uh, whole Rock Nation family for allowing us to, to do it there. But it was, it was, I, I had fun, man. It was, it's just fun. It's looking at myself on TV and yeah. then, and then the commercial breaks and then looking back and then it's just different, bro. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's just like, wow, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually standing, doing something that's cool, but uh, I'm having fun. You How's know? it in Brooklyn? I'm, the Brooklyn love party right crazy. now. I know it's, yeah. Oh, you, you want to go downtown with me? <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy. It's a lot of love. Because people love seeing that. People oh, love yeah. seeing us doing good things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially coming from And Brooklyn know, is dope, bro. Yeah. Like, Brooklyn no, it is, is it's like a melting pot. So many different beautiful cultures. Yeah. So mm-hmm. to showcase that, and we shot everywhere. We went all around Brooklyn showing everything. So it, 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 it's dope. You know what I'm saying? You got to be on the next season with me. Sounds <laughs> good. You know? I need you to, I need you to do it. Pull up in the Lambo and all that. He already, Works for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he already recruited Ladybug from the last time to be on season two, too. So they, I guess the, eventually we all going to be on. Uh, oh, okay. I'm coming next. <laughs> oh, okay. That's perfect. Oh, okay. I should date, matter of fact, on the next season. Oh, go ahead. Let me get to the, huh? Okay, forget it. Then you going to kiss right. me on the forehead, too, and get me in trouble? Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> situate the situation. I can't. Exactly. It got situated. So yeah. I'm done. It's all good. <laughs> I made the joke about the cash app and everything, but every time someone gets a little bit of fame, we see it with athletes all the time. Everybody comes out of the woodwork. I was yeah. going to say that. Yeah. You're on BET. Do you, do you get the text messages? Yo, how you been? Let me hold something. Like, you know. Oh, yeah, I do. Your third cousin on your, well, you your uncle's father's side. you probably get more artists in your DMs. Then no. Listen to this mixtape, right? Yeah, I, I, Friends yeah. you haven't spoken to in 10 years? Yo, I promise you not. I had a f- family member that... DM me like, hey, I'm your brother's sister, cousin, something like that. Some situation that I was confused about. I'm going to show you. Like, like, what's this? Facebook? <laughs> thing, like, Facebook Did they come to the cookout? Like, 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 like some family member like, that I had. Like, yeah, and it was crazy. I was just like, what? The fake love is real. Yo, it was, yeah, yo, it was crazy. It was yeah. Did you get them the TV and stuff they wanted and all that? The the jewelry? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the Bro, I, I was puzzled, but it's, it's crazy. I got nothing but love, though, so, yeah. you know. I don't know who it was, but I said, okay, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we keep it at the text, and that's it. And, right. You know, next thing right. you know, they'll be popping up at the at the parties and whatnot. Hey, family, uh, where are we going after this? You know. Uh, right. Yo, you know, your, me and your mother, we grew up. We <laughs> yep, back, 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 back. Right, listen, let me tell you some stories. Right. Man. Man. Exactly. Back in the day, and you be puzzled. Right. You be puzzled. Okay. But now nah, I'm chilling, man. I, like I'm, I like to believe I'm approachable. I never want to be that type of person that's in front of the camera, and that you can't talk to. Like if you see me in the streets, talk to me, holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's 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 connect. You know, yeah. let's figure it out how we can work together on this bill. We only here for a certain amount of time. Why why you like talk to me? Let's yeah. figure it out. And if I can help you, I will. And if I can't, I'm gonna tell you. Look, I can't. And you know, we don't waste each other's time. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm about. 
How how um are you using uh the show to expand your business? Um, well, essentially, what I, I have a marketing company, a branding branding and marketing company since '93, and what I've been doing is I created a platform in which people can actually contact me through my website. And then depending on the direction that they want to move with their project, I partner them with brands that might be interested in what they want to do. So I set up like little small activations that, yeah. that actually work. I have a, a ton of relationships. And like I said, uh, they're, you know, it, makes, it means nothing and they're just on the phone collecting dust. I want to be able to move the culture forward. That's my whole thing. I want to move the culture forward. And the mm -hmm. only way we're going to do that if we get these brands that also want to be a part of the culture mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, be, yeah. to, to connect. Yeah. They want to be. They, these brands want to get involved. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, there's a brand out there that that you know that makes gloves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a brand out there that you know that wants to get involved. Like these brands want to be involved with the culture, and 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 I want to be able to connect the people in in the streets that move in the culture forward mm -hmm. with these people, like the Millie Rock Dance, like yeah. those guys, Two Millie, and yeah. man, like it's it's a beautiful thing. And it's our definitely. culture is essentially pushing that dollar, and we're the the consumers. So, yeah. for you to bridge the gap is probably a huge like. Yeah, it's amazing. It's huge. Yeah. Like I, I mentioned it, the two milli guy because I don't know if you guys heard about that lawsuit that just happened where he was doing like the the the, the dance was on the uh, on the video game the Fort the Ford, Fortnite. Yeah, the Fortnite, yeah. and like they I'm sure that they didn't do it because they were trying to like rob it or whatever yeah, the case. Yeah, that it's just a popular it's, it's popping. Yeah. yeah. It's lit. But the way that they probably went around, uh, went about it was wrong. Yeah. Now, this is why my company there needs to be more companies like mine in place so that they can merge that too and it wow. shouldn't get to this point yeah. where yep. you get oh, what I'm saying? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that it's like, "Oh, now I got to do a lawsuit because you use my No, they want to be involved. Yeah. They they think you're cool, so bro. They well get a check out of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And without having to go through court legal yeah. and suing yeah. and all <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the problem. It that's it, it gets yeah, there. that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. you know, it's just a process, but we're going to get there together. No, it's, awesome. de it's, it's definitely true. Um, you know, first of all, shout out to uh to Kmart. Um you guys know they're gonna be rocking out with us uh, for the 2K tournament. Um, I told you guys they're sending over a whole bunch of swag bags for everybody that comes out to the Barclays Center on the 23rd. Um, and they've been trying to update Auntie every day. So actually, what they decided to do today was, so in addition to the $500 that you got, the winner of the tournament gets, the winner also gets now a, a 55 inch flat screen TV and a PlayStation 4. And second place is actually going to get two tickets to a, a future uh, Brooklyn Nets uh, game. So, uh, so we're not raffling off the, the TV. Nope, they're giving it straight to the to the winner. And then uh, <laughs> second place is getting two tickets, and they'll, they'll be like really good seats. So make sure that you guys uh, hit the link in the at Real Fan Talk. I'm glad I'm in the finals and get those yeah. <laughs> tickets. Yeah, you got a chance, that man, to go against the back to back champ. And, uh, and see what's up. Uh, so special shout out to Kmart and all of these uh, sponsors, the Rosado Firm, Sneaker Bar, Soundview Liquors, uh, everybody that's uh, been involved in helping us get the 2K uh, tournament together. Um, if, you, if you guys missed the first round, you got to wait till next year to sign back up. But we will be at the Barclays December, December 23rd, right before the uh, Nets versus Suns game. Um, so And you guys are all welcome to come, bring the kids out. It's going to be a good time. we got a whole bunch of other surprises for you guys as well. So just come out and support. Uh, once again, you can get more info about it on the website, realfansrealtalk.com, or Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk, Instagram and Twitter at realfantalk, or just hit us up, send us the fan mail questions, fan mail at realfansrealtalk.com, and we'll give you guys all of the info about tickets or whatever else you guys need. I'm going to run through the tickets real quick, though, and what you get, $40.00. Is all it costs. You get two tickets to the Nets versus Suns game. You get the ticket to the 2K tournament finals where you get to see yours truly, Mark the Statman Skevich, crowned as the champion because <laughs> this guy won two years in a row and he's coming in here thinking it's easy money. He's just going to take the $500. <laughs> I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> and then you get to watch the game after that, but it also includes the Kmart swag bag. Last week, Trip said it includes a full size basketball. Mm -hmm. Hat, gloves, scarf. So you get your winter apparel there. You get your basketball out there to go shoot around in the court. You also get a Brooklyn Nets hoodie. I mean, tickets to the game, tickets to the 2K tournament, a Kmart swag bag, and a Brooklyn Nets hoodie. $40. You can't beat that with a baseball bat. Realfansrealtalk.com has the Eventbrite link. 
make sure you get your tickets before they sell out. And now, oh, and, and, and just, you know, for the guy, folks at home, before we get to the sports, we are raising money for Family on 3. Of let's course. not Let's yeah. not forget that. Um, everything that's raised uh, at the Barclays Center and what we already raised from the first rounds of the tournament are going directly to Family on 3 to fund their hospital tour this uh, Christmas. They will be going to uh, three different hospitals throughout the city and uh, giving out uh, gifts to, the, to all of the kids that can't make it home for the holidays. So if you needed a, a cause to support this Christmas, come out to the to the Real Fans Real Talk third annual NBA 2K tournament and support, man. It's for the kids, man. Now, who's your squad in sports? Oh, I hope man. it's not the Knicks. Why not? You can talk about it. Because I don't, day. you know, I don't, you know, just I like the Nets. I feel bad if it was. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Because they haven't won in like 40 something years. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. also why I feel so like that man got a chance to win. Knicks fan? I'm home, you know, I'm Brooklyn. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. what I can see. You can understand that's a Brooklyn guess. thing, man. Like, I mean, I'm from Brooklyn, too, but I grew up a Knicks fan. I'm not going to just... I mean, they're both bad over. right now, so, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, regardless of who's bad, I'm not, you know. I He's mean, loyal. I would say the Nets yeah. would be He's second loyal. since they're Brooklyn. It's okay yeah. if they win, but my, you know, I'm not going to just lose that Knicks fandom from my whole life and just But you take through. a lot of punishment, though, being a Knicks fan. Absolutely, yeah. it's abuse. Yeah, yeah well, it is. Um, I, I, <laughs> they lose a lot. They, they, uh, they definitely lose a lot. Yeah. Um, was it 45 years? Yeah, I, I just don't is. become a fan <laughs> of the Knicks. Uh, talking about this all the time. I'm so done with the Knicks. What like. team he follows and, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm just, having no. the Nets as a backup I was just trying to do the, the math on it and see. I think it's 45. Savage. Is it 45 or 46? And then have two teams in football, too, the Ravens and the Giants. And, you know, so the, you know you could you root for only one of them has to win, or yeah, I don't know how it works in your mind. Right now it is, it is how, how fandom yeah, it de works. It, and, it definitely, but, you know. definitely is. I just like to win. Yeah. You know, so forty six years is a long if time. If the Yankees weren't the greatest team in <laughs> in sports history, you probably wouldn't be a Yankee fan either. But you know, I, I probably wouldn't. I like I support the. You know, I, I want the winners to win. So man. you're definitely not like a loyal fan. You just, just a straight hot. Call you just call your bad wagon, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let him do that. <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. And, and this is what he does on, on the show as well. <laughs> and then he'll step back and he has nothing to do with it. Just start shit and then yeah. back down. Next thing you know, we got a ten thousand dollar bet on the line for the fight. Right. Right. He just sitting back like, oh, you know, well, uh, yeah, guys. So you know, you know, don't get me. Sorry. <laughs> I told those How did that escalate so quickly? Yeah. And then right. you hit the rewind button yeah. and you realize how it really started. <laughs> right, but, exactly. But so the Nets, who else? Oh man, I like I like what the Lakers is doing. You know, I haven't. Be honest with you, I haven't been pitching into the games because I've been filming, doing a bunch yeah, of promo of course, recently. Yeah. But uh, I like I like what the uh, what the Lakers are doing. I like you know uh, <clears throat> I've always been a Kobe fan since like high school days middle school i like yeah. what i like the organization i like what they got going on over there i'm just asking so i could go into the news of a you know lakers i believe looking for uh anthony davis yeah uh i mean who wouldn't want anthony davis but they're trying to mm -hmm. work some things out to uh bring another superstar over anthony davis from the pelicans they uh the rumors are they talking about putting uh brandon ingram lonzo ball and uh caldwell pope together with a first round pick um, and to work out some kind of three-team deal maybe with Orlando to bring over Anthony Davis. I don't know if that's going to happen or you know, right now. Um, it well, definitely won't happen before the 15th because Caldwell Pope can't be traded until Since the this year you happen to be a Lakers fan. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, hold on. First but, of all, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I just want to know. Let me, like, let me, let me explain. This is not, I'm, not a, I'm not a Lakers fan. I have a four-year contract with the Lakers. <laughs> and once my contract is up, <laughs> I could be done with the Lakers again. This is <laughs> yeah. only business. Just let's get that straight. Do you the think home, that that business. trade would be good for the Lakers, what they're giving up? Yeah, it would. Yeah, I, I agree. Because to put I mean, two top five players together on the same team, one of them is named LeBron James. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I told you guys earlier in the year, I got them finishing at least third in the Western uh, Conference. But if you add Anthony Davis to that, even if you take out Alonzo Ball and Ingram, Pope hasn't really done much this season anyway. Uh, but you bring in over one, probably the, maybe the best big man in basketball um, to go along with LeBron. And they still got Rondo, who's a, a, a world champion. You got... Uh, you know, Tyson Chandler, who's an NBA champion, defensive player of the year. So they got a lot of veterans over there. I think they could give Golden State a run mm -hmm. with those two guys because they struggle with teams that have two uh, superstar teams. Yeah, well, I mean, DeMarcus Cousins is going to be coming back after Christmas, so they're going to have an all-star in all five positions. So, you know, if Golden State stays healthy, they're the clear-cut favorite. But, you know, 
I mean, we'll see what happens as far as, you know, whether or not they can yeah. stay healthy because that's a big if as we're seeing now. But uh, the Knicks trying to get a superstar possibly of their own in John Wall, which leads to the fan mail question. Frank from, uh, oh, excuse me, Charles from Brooklyn wrote in, should the Knicks push for a trade with John Wall? Now, Sheesh. I mean, as, as, help, yeah. as the Knicks fan, I mean, it really depends on what we're giving up because I don't want to yeah. give up some of the young stars that we just got with Alonzo Trier. If we're giving up like Hardaway, French Frank, and a second round pick or something like that, then yeah. definitely. But that wouldn't make sense for I, Washington. I think they were to talking about like uh, uh, Frank Nicotolina, Dotson, um, and, uh, and a, a draft pick, a 2020 uh, first round draft pick. I'd be okay with one, that. One, I mean, more, one more piece involved in that trade. Dotson's been looking good. I mean, he didn't play for like four games straight. And, you know, he had the relationship with the coach where the coach was like, hey, I'm trying to see what lineups work and I might need you in the future. And then he just starts, you know, lighting up uh, on, on the court and just, you know, bowling out. So his, his uh, trade value definitely increased. Yeah. So, uh if that's the trade, I'm okay with it because French Frank, uh, you know, I, I don't really see too much potential in him. I think we're both in agreement with that. If, yeah. you know, they want him, you know, by all means. So Yeah, I, de I, de I definitely, uh, yeah, you can get rid of Nick and Selena. He's, he's a bust. He's garbage. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, he's not going to get any better. Uh, I mean, you got the four rookies that come in and get more playing time than him. A couple of them are starting, so. Anything, anything to get rid of him, I'm, I'm all for. And we're for. guard heavy too, so we. Yeah, they know. can, they can afford him. Plus, I mean, John Wall is a superstar. If you bring him, bring him over, and I think when Porzingis comes back, that could be a nice little one too, and that that'll be enough to get another big name free agent to uh, to come over in the mm -hmm. off season because the Knicks definitely have some cap room, and they could bring another player over. I have no faith in them anymore. I'm over the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, well, I mean, if John Wall, Kristaps Porzingis. Kevin Durant and the rookies that we have all, you know, stay together the next season, yeah. then that's that's a squad taking the East right there. So Yeah, we definitely gotta gotta get some things together. Nice. But we they do have the cap room, K D talks about it, but that's the thing. I mean, we went over it before. A lot of superstars, even LeBron James during the whole decision rumored, oh, he might go to the Knicks. Every year there's a free agent. Oh, they're thinking about the Knicks playing in New York. But the Knicks haven't signed a major free yeah. agent. They probably think about those the 46 years and then it's the like... Biggest, yeah, the biggest the biggest free agent signing <laughs> of it. my lifetime was Amari Stoudemire because mm -hmm. everyone else comes by way of trade and we end up giving up too much for them. And He had two bad knees when he came over. So, it's, yeah. it's, you know, but it's, it's, that's what they had no there. Before we, gotta, we leave yeah. <laughs> the NBA, though, I definitely want to big up Russell Westbrook for passing kid with the triple-double. He's now at 103, I believe. Is, so, and uh, yeah, and he's, he's, in, he's, in, he's in uh, third, third. He's in third place. Oscar time. Robinson is still number one. Yeah. Magic, jo Magic Johnson is still no at number two. So big up to Russell. Yeah, so he's been doing the same the last uh, couple of seasons on with his triple double yes. streak. So big shout out to Russell Westbrook. Still pushing away his own teammate to get the rebounds. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> savage. Hey, you got to want it more. But he's doing it. Guy. Yeah, he surpassed <laughs> him. So you got to want it more. Um, but uh, really quick, I want I do want to go back. Uh, Back to, the, to our, our last charity event, the Turkey Giveaway. Uh, we got a chance to chop it up with uh, Hassan Johnson, mm -hmm. your favorite actor's favorite actor. If you guys watch The Wire, uh, yeah. Belly, Brooklyn's Finest, uh, I mean, he got a whole list of movies. Just go on his IMDb page. But uh, we're going to run that interview really quick for you guys. Yeah. Uh, Ladybug chopped it up with him. And uh, when we come back, we got another guest we're going to bring out. We're going to talk a little bit more sports. And we're going to talk more about the hustle, man, because we need some tips on, on how we can step our hustle up, man, from the plug. Let's get it. Just let us know when y'all ready in the back, fellas. Johnson, and this is Real right, Fans, man. Real Talk. Peace. RealFansRealTalk.com. The Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the cat scan. Uh -huh. What's going on, guys? It's your favorite ladybug. You know, we're here giving back for the holiday season. What's going on? We have a familiar... I'm all right. How you doing, ladybug? Thanks for having me, y'all. It's Hassan Johnson, your favorite actor's favorite actor. Oh, see, your favorite actor's favorite actor. 
your favorite ladybugs. Yeah, it works. Just your favorites giving back. Now, what makes you take time out tonight and really make this a priority out your schedule? I mean, listen, man, if people take time to support me, I got to give it back, right? I know it sounds so cliche, but it's just the truth. And then you got to pay it forward. And that's what we here to do. Shout out to Zad, Mita, you know, the community, Brooklyn, Breville Community Center, the police, NYPD. Shout out everybody that's making it happen. We making families happy this year. They can cook their food. They can eat. They can invite somebody over for a plate. That's what we want to provide. It's a beautiful thing. Now, what goes on in your home? What goes on in your home during this? Oh, day? man, a, a lot of eating, a lot of greediness, you know, and just family coming together, having a good time. And that's one th good thing about Thanksgiving. We all got our, our different ideologies about the holiday and what it mean to us. But, but, but nonetheless, for everybody in common, it's getting together and, and spending time with family. If nothing else, you get to spend time with family, people you haven't seen in a long time, catch up on things, what, what hasn't been going on, what has been going on, and that's it. You know, just, you know, take your time with it, you know, and enjoy yourself. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, outside of, you know, family and how, anything else you're doing for the holidays, anything else you got coming up? Well, besides giving back, spending time with family, uh, I've been busy. I've been working on a few things. You can catch me November 30th. I got a film coming out with Trey Songs called uh, Blood Brother. It's in limited theaters. It'll also be on demand, video on demand. Um, Jack Kessie's also in it. I don't know if any of y'all watch uh, Claws with Nisi now. He played Roller. All right, yep, he's a good dude, man. We, we made an amazing film. My boy J.D. Williams from The Y is in it also. Um, second season of Tales. Uh, what else, man? It's a lot going on. Just stay tuned, man. Just stay tuned. Awesome. So with your busy schedule, once again, we appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time and doing this. It's a great thing. Um, you know, if anybody wants to keep in touch with you, what, what's some platform? You know, you got an Instagram. Okay, yeah. Do Definitely got Instagram and Twitter. So on Twitter, it's Hassan Johnson. Hassan with two S's. On Instagram, is H-I-N-I-K-O-J. And um, I'm on Facebook, but not a lot. And um, that's it, y'all. You know, check in, plug in with me, see what I'm doing. You see, they real. They real. See, they coming out and supporting and doing these things. So make sure you guys stay tuned. We got more coming up. Let's go. Peace, y'all. All right. Bianca Bonnie from Love & Hip Hop New York. You already know I'm rocking with real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk dot com. Where Arthur Dom is Trip Young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Star. That's man, if you're not too... Right, welcome back. Welcome back, Real Fans, Real Talk. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, I know y'all not just joining us, but I'm just saying, you know, make sure y'all y'all got us locked in every Thursday, 8 to 9 p.m. on Verizon 44. And uh, check us out on the web, realfansrealtalk.com, facebook.com forward slash realfanstalk, Twitter, Instagram, at realfantalk. And uh, we still got a lot to get into. Uh, we, 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 we brought over one of, one of our sports podcasts to friends. Uh, Scoop, what's going on? Tell us the Scoop, man. What's up? Ain't nothing, man. I'm on your platform. Thank you for having me, first and foremost. Pleasure to be here. We've been going back and forth on Instagram, and we, 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 I'm in Brooklyn. We could have been anywhere in the world, but we all chose to be here, so I appreciate that. Thanks I mean, for having it's me. It's Brooklyn. They don't play a better place to be than, than Brooklyn. You know? Of course. Of course. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can't. Yes, sir. But uh, really quick, just uh, tell us about the, the podcast. Well, Scoopy Radio uh, had 2.5 million streams last year. Uh, you can subscribe to the Scoopy Radio podcast uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn app, Stitcher app, or simply visit ScoopyRadio.com. Uh, and, we're, I mean, we're making moves. We've had anybody from uh, The Voice of Siri to DJ Khaled to Mark, uh, Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban to um, Too Short. Uh, and we had uh, Queens' own uh, Kenny the Jet Smith, who told me had Michael Jordan not retired, uh, the Chicago, the Houston Rockets still would have beat the Chicago Bulls, and they would have won those two championships between '94 and '95. Well, he's supposed to say that, but well, yeah, I don't know if that's true. He's in a conundrum. He's, <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a, a little bit native. biased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's biased. So. Yes, sir. I, yes, I, I hope he would say that. What did you expect him to say? No, yeah. he would have lost. Yeah, <laughs> right. and, and it was crazy. Everybody knows he would have lost, but yeah, you know he, he doesn't, yeah. and his teammates don't. Yeah, you know it's funny. You actually are donning the Jordan Ten. I, I see the white and blue on one side, and I see the white and red on the other side. Those look like the ones that Nick Anderson wore. 
yeah. uh, in the semis in, in 90, 90, 95. What, 95. Oh. Um, you know, that was back when Michael switched from 45 to 23 yeah. and he got fined uh, for, for for doing so. But it's funny you're wearing that because, you know, Kenny kind of w- broke down uh, the stats from when they played in uh, 95 and, and uh, when they played during the regular season. Mm-hmm. And it just was an interesting situation. Michael Jordan left from retirement, came back, lost to Orlando Magic during Orlando Magic into the play in the Rockets uh, in, in the NBA Finals that year. That was a young Shaq, young Penny. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's interesting um, because Scottie Pippen, it was actually talked about on uh, the jump on ESPN with Rachel Nichols and mm-hmm. Scottie Pippen uh, kind of gave his own diatribe and said, you know, Mike or rather Kenny forgot one important thing. He said, my job as a defender was to cut a head off of a snake. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, but 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 more than more than anything, he wouldn't you know, have been guarding Kim Elijah one. Yeah, man. But I, but, I think but, but the Bulls always had, you know, their mm-hmm. plan was they got like they had four or five centers on any given year for the to foul and hack whoever yeah. their star center was. And, sure, Bill you know, Winnington, uh, what was it, Luke, Luke Longley, Longley. A- anywhere in between. But yeah, yeah Robert I mean, Parrish. Yeah, the chief. He was like 40-something years old. John yeah. Sally still Bill got a ring. Yeah, man. Well, Bill Cartwright, you know, was traded for Charles Oakley. Yeah. That was during the first three-peat with, with the Bulls. Um, but I, I think when you look at the Bulls' offense, you know, that triangle offense was predicated upon big guards. So, you, I mean, when Michael came back, they had Ron Harper, who had had his run with the Clippers and the yeah. Cleveland Cavaliers and came over, was the starting point guard for, for the, the Bulls and later, you know, was the starting point guard for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, th- th- that triangle offense was, was solely built upon uh, the play of wing guys and – you know, I think what what gets lost in the translation is you know how how integral uh, Scottie Pippen was in that Bulls offense. You know, he saved Le- excuse me, he saved Michael yeah. uh, on help side defense a lot, and uh, I, I think that you know a lot of times in the NBA, uh, I think as much as people pay attention to Michael and his greatness. I think what gets lost in translation is other people, like Reggie Miller, how good of a player he was, how good of a player Hakeem Olajuwon is. And I think as you're looking retroactively, as I mentioned again, the Jordan 10s, one of the most comfortable Air Jordans, by the way, anyway. They definitely are. Uh, yeah. I agree with y'all. <laughs> they, got like, they got like Gore-Tex technology in there, something like that, man. It's very comfortable. But I think with what we're seeing now in the retro state that we're in with basketball now, you know, certain people that, that slip through the cracks, like Hakeem Olajuwon. I don't think people realize how great – they really were in half. I, I think he's one of the most underrated players in history because a lot of people won't even think about him with the top five and centers of all time because they always think Shaq and, and sure. you know, the uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar mm-hmm. and and Bill Russell and, you know. Yeah, I had Gary Vitti, uh was the, the – um Lakers trainer for 32 years on the Scoopy Radio podcast, and he said that he felt that you know Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was one of the greatest athletes to ever live. And I mean, he was putting him over Tom Brady. I uh, was putting him over yeah. Michael. Putting him over a lot of people. I mean, he won you know championships. Well, a lot of people have Kareem as the greatest of all time. Won mm-hmm. two championships on two different teams with the Milwaukee Bucks. Unblockable skyhook and yeah. listen, man. Points leader all time, and he taught Uncle Jesse on Full House how to skyhook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you can do that, then yeah, you're yeah. definitely good to go. Now I want to I want to switch over to uh, to boxing. Uh, we had uh, one of the biggest heavyweight fights we've seen in a while go down this past weekend: Deontay Wilder uh, versus Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. Um, the fight ended in a draw. Did uh, did all you guys see the fight? <coughs> Clips. Okay, because mm-hmm. I was because you know. Um, there's Frank a lot of Staten controversy Island about the decision. Too. We yeah. just because we had the fan mail question, I want to give them props. That was the other fan mail question. Frank from Staten Island, right, wrote in. Do you guys think the draw was the right decision? So I mean, I think the draw personally just happened because they want you know they want another rematch, and Anthony Joshua is ducking Wilder, so you know it's a way to they sold this pay per view at seventy five dollars a pop, which is you know crazy but you know uh the prices are going up for boxing pay-per-views now and i mean two knockdowns with deontay wilder i mean he didn't wipe the floor with, with fury but i think uh a, a split decision in his favor or unanimous decision it, it kind of reminded me of uh you uh, i hope i'm not speaking french you you guys also the, the creed movie right Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just reminded me of the the upbuild. I didn't see it, but oh, you didn't. Not well, yet. I won't give it all away, oh, well. uh, my brother. But what I will say is, uh, when you look at the the Creed movie, remember how? Well, I'm kind of giving it away. But <laughs> the, the, the second the, one or the first one? The second one. Okay, yeah. The, the first fight where it was a you know the the, the, the legal hit and yeah. that led into the next 
the next big fight. There was so much uh, parity there when you saw just, I think it's going to be a bigger draw. Yeah. Or no different than, you know, Steve Harvey again doing the Miss Universe. You know, you saw yeah. him mess up now. You, you see him going at it again. So I think, you know, when you look at this situation, it's a bigger buildup. But I'm in Brooklyn, so I can say this. I, I'm really looking forward to when Deontay Wilder will stop being scared and will fight my brother, Brooklyn's own uh, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Hmm. I'm looking forward to that. <coughs> well, I don't know if it's necessarily about him, him being scared. I just think... I'm partial, I, mean, I ain't gonna lie. At this point, I mean, you know, I mean, we're talking about trying to unify the heavyweight division, so I don't think he's looking backwards per se right now, but I do think that if Joshua ducks him, he'll eventually get to him before before that fight. Mm -hmm. um, but to go back to the fan mail question, um, I, I mean, as much as I wanted Deontay to win, I was okay with the draw, um, but... At the same time, I mean, Deontay Wilder pretty much took the fight to Tyson Fury the, the whole time. Uh, and usually it, it's hard. They, they won't strip the champ of the belt unless you have to really take the fight to the champ and beat the champ. And Tyson Fury didn't do that. And then he got knocked down twice. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not you feel like the count was a little late on that on the, the last uh, round of the fight. Um, but, I mean, you know, I, I thought Deontay Wilder, I thought they both did well. I'm looking forward to the, to the rematch. And uh, Deontay actually was kind of hinting that he wanted to maybe do it back at the Barclay Center. Um, so, you know, if that does happen, that would actually be dope because, you know, we're definitely going to be in the building for that. Hometown crib discount. I mean, it's a great... It's this a is like great his second home. Like, he's, he's had a couple of title defenses at the mm -hmm. Barclay Center. Yeah. So, you know, I would definitely be looking forward to having, having that fight here. For sure. If not the Anthony Joshua fight. But we know he's not going to come to uh, the United States to fight. So, if we actually see that fight, it'll probably be in the U.K. Why do you yeah. think he's dug at him so much? Because his right hand. It's, uh, he's got the best hands in boxing probably in a long time. Um, well, he, and, you know, Joshua has a belt. He doesn't want to lose it. Yeah. He doesn't want to lose that, you know, constant payday of every fight that he fights in as a heavyweight championship Man, fight. it sounds like Creed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 at the end of the day, it's, it comes down to, to the money. You don't yeah. have those belts. You're not the top dog. You can't call your shots on what you want. Um, and Deontay's camp actually... Gave uh, Anthony Joshua what he wanted, the 50 million, and they still couldn't make the fight happen. So, you know, he, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to lose the belts. So. And boxing is that one sport like you lose one time and yeah, it could be you're it. completely discredited. Yeah. And <laughs> Anything you, else, you can have a million loss. Same uh, fight purses anymore. Yeah. yeah. Would George Foreman say anything less would be uncivil? No, that was Charles Barkley. Yeah. Was in the <laughs> right Sir Charles. Commercial. Yes, yeah. Anything less would be uncivilized. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. Really quick, uh, Santos. I want. I do. I do want to come back to uh, to the show uh, for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are are, are still shooting uh, for season one right now. We're just <clears throat> wrapped up season one. Okay. Uh, and we'll start working on season two. Hopefully, right, so, right away. Or oh, how's the? Pretty sure it's like right after the holidays and come back New Year, New Year's February. Okay. How has the the reception been as, as far as uh, numbers wise? Oh, we're doing pretty good. I think we're uh, our numbers is pretty good. We top 100, I think, on TV, which is pretty cool. Um, okay. It's a new show, it's a new cast, non-celebrity cast, which is also um, it's, it's not like a franchise that has been established for uh, some time that people are familiar with the name. So people are actually tuning in, and uh, a lot of a lot of folks have it on demand and are actually checking it out now. So it's, mm -hmm. it's doing pretty good. And as amongst the the other shows that are on BET, is that one of the, is that like one of the fan fan favorites? Is as it Got yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think top. it's good though that they, you know, they gave new faces uh, an opportunity. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, because it's not like you know, it's not like a TV show that has like you know, uh, artists or mm -hmm. celebrities that people are familiar with. It's just this is brand new cast, yeah. and people actually are tuning in to watch it. So that's that's a that's plus, how you plus know the show is actually good, and, and people are falling in love with the characters because these are all new people. And usually we're tracked to the shows if it's the people that we already know and exactly. we want to get in their business. But when it's all new people gotta, and yep. you're still tuned in, then that means, you know, you guys are doing something right. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought about that too in comparison to Grand Hustle, which is, you know, T.I. So it's like, that's going to draw the attention because you know, it's, we all know T.I. Yeah. We all know the, the contestants. Right. Well, for you guys to grant that attention and it's a whole new faces is amazing. Cause yeah, it's definitely a blessing. Yeah. Uh, it's great editing. The, the, the director, Mark Ford, we actually shot the, uh, the documentary for uh, the Biggie, the Biggie documentary. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So he understands like cinematic work and, and and like he understands film, and that's the reason why it looks so clean. It does. If you notice, we don't have no uh, green screens. 
where yeah. you, you know, confessions, oh, wow. yeah. like, you know, get locked up in a closet and talk about what really happened. We don't have that. It's all real time. And we actually, we just showing that. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. they did amazing work with the feminist, crispy, crispy, uh, it is. clear. Yeah. Happy how, with it. How long? Is your is your reality T V run gonna last? Man, you know what? I'm like I said, I'm happy oh. with I'm, ha I'm happy with the edits. You know, yeah. I, <laughs> until <laughs> Until they mess with the edits, then that's it, it's so. <laughs> you, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with the turnout, I'm happy with what they're doing, I'm happy with, with the with what the uh company is doing with BT the support. Mm -hmm. And I'll do a second, third, fourth, fifth season. <laughs> So they give you the, the spin-off show, the plug, and then that's hey, the hey, show. Hey, that's, that's Hold on, let me get my, my copyright on that, too. Don't, get, don't play me. Don't play <laughs> me. Hey. All right, when y'all ready to give Santos his own show, y'all know it came from Real Fans Real Talk first. Give me my props on that and the, and the credit, and, the, and I'm good. Listen, I'm only, doing it if I can, if I can right. I'm only doing it if I can bring my people from Real Fans Real Talk. Right? I right. know. Right there. Let's, let's the new it, cast. I'm going to talk to, talk to uh, Deborah, some, you know, see if we can work this thing out. Right. <laughs> I like the idea. Let's do it. Have a whole episode. Let's do it. That's so funny. All right, we, we running a little bit low on time, so we're going to jump into really quick the uh, final thoughts segment of the program. So we're going to start on this side, and we'll work our way around. Scoop. Final thought? Keep hope alive. <laughs> Enjoy sports. Uh, I'm proud to see what you're doing with uh, NBA 2K as well as uh, what you're doing on December 23rd with the two late 2K League. I'm actually on the my, my career mode, shameless plug. So if there's anything we can do to, to kind of create that synergy there, I'm all for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm all for my final thoughts, um, feed your focus, keep grinding. As you see, we have a young black male up here today, you know, making uh, changes in reality TV. So just feed your focus and stop your distractions. Thank you for tuning. Thanks for having me. Hustle in Brooklyn every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Uh, let's trust the process. Let's mm -hmm. continue to work hard and trust the process of what's going on. Um, free Takashi 6 9 <laughs> there you, there, I there can't. You go. I'm not even gonna get into that, into that one right now, but uh, yeah, free, free, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, you're about to say. Free, 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 free me to I free can't. Takashi. I can't. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I can't. I, yeah, I can't even. We'll, we'll talk about that one off the, uh, off the. Off the yeah. um, you know, um, but shout out to my people that situate in the situation. Uh, situations. Don't get situated. Then again, don't get, yeah, don't yeah. get situated. <laughs> so, what us, that man? On Scoop's theme of keeping the hope alive, the Giants are technically not eliminated from the playoffs <laughs> yet. Very unlikely, but you know. You got to keep pushing. <laughs> Final thought, though, make sure you check me out on season two of uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hustle in Brooklyn. <laughs> Hustle in Brooklyn, yeah. I, <laughs> I said either. it wrong. Hey, listen. <laughs> it's, 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 all, it's all good, I man. I um, No, I'm, I'm just going to end it off uh, again with the charity event. You guys know uh, how our charity tour runs throughout the year. We just finished. Uh, actually, in Santos, you were there as well, mm -hmm. of Walling for Peace. Shout out to, uh, to Haran. Um, with the whole Born for Peace uh, movement. And uh, again, coming into this December 23rd, make sure you guys hit the link in our bio. Come out, man, support. We're supporting family on three. We want to make sure that every kid gets something for Christmas. Every kid yeah. gets a little extra love this holiday season. So come out to the Barclays Center, get those tickets. We got a $150 raffle from uh, Sneaker Bar. They got some of the flyer sneakers in New York City, right in the South Bronx. Uh, Soundview Liquors, they sent us over another bottle of V.S. Hennessy to raffle off as well. And, of course, uh, the Rosado Firm and Kmart. But uh, for myself, Trip Young, Mark the Statman, Skevish, Santos, Scoop, and, of course, Emma Marie. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys next week, man. Good night, everyone. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the art. Even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh.